And one of the things that was central to his discourse, especially early on, was trying to stop you as you're building a narrative. But, you know, Marxist jargon, you would say as you're concretizing, as you're developing all of these facts in their interconnection so that you can paint a picture of the whole conflict. He stops you and he's like, no, let's stop here. Let's stop here. Let's stop. And in terms of like methodology of approaching the world, that's the essence of like bourgeois thinking. You see things in their disconnections. You think that you're right when you're able to just hone in on one specific thing and see it separate from everything else. And what you're actually doing is separating that fact from the factors and you never be able to understand it because the fact arises thanks to the factors that allowed the fact to be a fact. And you kept on trying to do that. And you, yeah, at some point, uh, you didn't get mad, but you mentioned if you look at this through a dialectical materialist lens, you realize that it's absolutely necessary to look at history, to see how it is that these uh, these things that we're looking at, they don't exist in a vacuum. They exist in interconnection to a whole series of other processes that in order to understand that one thing that you want to hone in, I have to give you a view of all these other things that it presupposes, right? You cannot understand it without understanding all the things that it presupposes. And he kept on preventing you from, from doing that. Um, and I think you were able to do that, you know, over the whole thing. You were able to present a, a, a picture that connected all of the important facts and presented a view of the totality in a way that viewed the events of today in a correct manner. But he kept on trying to prevent you from, from doing that. And that act of let's just continue narrowing in to the point where, um, to a point of absurdity, really, one of the things we talked about in the phone call yesterday was this, this old uh, uh, sort of fallacy, uh, reductio ad absurdum, which mm-hmm. means that you're reducing things to the point of absurdity. And the classical argument here is Zeno of Elia. In order to argue against the existence of change, in order to say that change is an illusion, one of the paradoxes that he had, you know, Aristotle said he had four, but one of them was that in order to get from point A to point B, you have to go halfway. And to go halfway, you have to go halfway between that. And he says that there's an infinite amount of halfways. And as finite creatures, we cannot cross an infinite spectrum. Therefore, change is an illusion because that's a contradiction. He was trying to do something similar by continuously reducing to the point of absurdity and trying to dizzy you, which he never achieved. Um, he took things to a point of of ridiculousness that no one in their right mind going into a debate is going to remember very specific dates. That's just absurd. The point is to construct the narrative. And he was trying to build up gotcha moments for you in a way that I think any non vosh fan neutral observer would be able to see through and see what's really going on there. 